Place your trays in the upright position. Enjoy the ride. Bullet points. Welcome aboard to Bullet Points in the Bang Tango. I've got Arthur on with me again, and we're going to run through some biblical topic on the four horsemen of the apocalypse what's up arthur how you doing tonight bro not too bad thanks for having me man how's it been since we last talked it's been good it's been good getting ready for the winter uh been doing leaves and whatnot got to get the leaves up in the fall and been working on that and trying to stay busy and get everything ready for the long cold winter as joe biden said we're getting ready to have (laughs) oh yeah did you hear that imagine yeah i mean i've heard a lot of crazy stuff yeah so how is it over there Uh, do you guys have lockdown as well or what are the what's the situation with the whole virus thing well here in south jersey we never actually came completely out of quote unquote lockdown they've had a lot of restrictions on like restaurants and businesses through the entire thing and now they started easing up like to go back to school they were doing virtual part virtual part real school some days in classroom some days on computer now they're tightening that back down bars and restaurants they never opened fully up they had them down at about like quarter capacity but you can it's mandatory to have a mask on while outside here in Jersey. <clears throat> our governor did that. But you walk into a restaurant, you go sit at your table, you take your mask off. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they're tightening um, down on all that. And who knows how far it's going to go this time. Now that the Democrats seem to have drained Trump from the swamp, uh, who knows where we're going i mean this is probably going to be something we have never seen before in our lives what we're getting ready to enter into oh yeah definitely definitely i mean it seems like 2020 is going to go down in the history books as one of those crazy years and we're going to be looking back at the whole pandemic situation and with all these ridiculous little rules i mean the government seemed to be behaving in some crazy ways. Yeah. Obviously taking advantage of the uh, situation. They certainly um, are. And, and you know, that's what they're about. That's what the left, and I wouldn't even call them Democrats. They're way beyond Democrat. They're so far <laughs> left, you know, we don't know where they're at. And the things they want to do in this country and globally, I mean, our government seems to want to make everything that we're doing be global so these things Mm. we we know are coming and i mean all you can do is brace for impact yeah we're all passengers on this train sit back and enjoy the ride (laughs) yeah well we're going (laughs) off the rails on this crazy train (laughs) but we we know it's coming as believers you know reading the word and studying the word we know these things are going to come to pass and there are those out there i'll go ahead and name them rob skiba he uh pushes more for a i think it's 2032 2033 fulfillment of when we go into like the sixth seal because there is a blood red moon alignment at that time i don't know the specifics we kind of brushed over it, me and him, one time, and I think it was an online just typed discussion. But and he could be right. Uh, I seem to, I lean that we're a little closer than that. But I mean, only time can tell. It's it's God's time clock, not ours. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm always a bit skeptical when people start bringing dates in, you know, like and setting dates and setting an exact time we know the scripture outright tells us that uh, we shouldn't be doing that but some people seem to uh, never learn yeah. <laughs> other people's mistakes because we've had so many date setters yeah what? but but the feeling that it's in the right around the corner somewhere is definitely um there i think we're the generation that jesus talked about definitely that the generation won't pass um until all these things be fulfilled so um 
Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And, you know, with this whole virus situation, one thing that has become a bit apparent to me and a bit um, shocking, I guess, is the the whole response to the virus seems to be uh, unified and like on a global scale, like you were talking about your government getting ready to kind of um, globalize everything. And this virus kind of all kind of gives gives me a bit of a feel that we're already we're already heading in that direction as a as a, you know as the whole planet kind of unifies itself embraces itself for the impact of this virus i agree every single government is trying to take advantage of their population and in that sense it's it's just a bit eye opening how how really how globalized are we already you know yeah, so maybe we don't even realize how deep this stuff goes. Well, when when you dig deeper than than the government and the articles, the write ups, the videos, and you go down to just the comments sections, like on Reuters and stuff like that, Washington Post, mm -hmm. it seems that the majority of the peoples here in the u.s i can't speak for the globe but here in the u.s the majority of the peoples are mind melded into the pandemic being so bad that it's airborne that they wear their masks i would say 24 7 you see them driving in their vehicles by themselves mm -hmm. alone windows up with masks on you see them jogging with masks on, riding bikes with masks on. Yeah. And when you oppose that and saying, hey, you need to get a little fresh air, you know, take the mask off for a little while, they get they get outright indignant. I mean, <laughs> and start thrashing you up. You know, you're selfish. You want to kill everybody. Da, 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 da. And it's yeah. insanity. It's insanity here in the U.S., it is. It's a bit in, of insanity going on here, and a lot of division happening through, like, throughout the population. It seems like there's a massive, massive divide, you know, almost maybe even 50-50, where everyone seems to be divided against Brexit or Europe and Trump, Biden, Democrat, Republican, mask, no mask. It's just crazy. <laughs> and that's all by design. We know that. Well, yeah, divide and conquer, right? Yep. And, um, a house divided can't stand. Amen. That is true. And, um, yeah, when you turn on the TV, it seems like there's just a bunch of fear mongering and panic and anxiety coming from the, from the television and from the media, you know? So that seems to be the agenda. And you see the fear in the people's eyes as well. When you just sit in that bus or the train, everyone's like, you know, social distancing from each other. Everyone's hiding their faces. It's just crazy. Well, they have seen anything like it. I know they have taken socialization almost completely out of society with the masks. I mean, everything's so impersonal now when you go up to a cash register and you're you're trying to say something to the cashier and you can't hear them, they can't hear you. It's all you know, oh you can't you can't see basically whether somebody's smiling or whether they're growling at you. It, it's yeah. It's a time it's I've never thought we'd see in our lifetime, but like you were just saying a few uh, seconds ago that all these things will be fulfilled and then the end will come. So we, we knew mm -hmm. they were coming, but it's just how much worse is it going to get? Amen. Amen. And, um, yeah, all of this, this whole situation, the pandemic situation has kind of made me look a bit at the book of revelation again. And just looking through it with a new kind of lens in light of what's going on right now. And it was interesting because I was listening to this podcast. There's this guy I'm subscribed to. And he just takes down different biblical entities and, and try to, tries to break, break them down, see what the, the word says about them. And I was listening to one that was on the four writers of the book of Revelation. And he said a really interesting thing that I never considered before. Okay. So I thought maybe running it past you, 
and uh, yeah, see if anything can be uh, taken out of this. All right. Well, let me open up Blue Letter Bible and let me hit the quick nav. Revelation, and we're going to chapter six off the top of my head, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah it's chapter six. Yeah. And um, I think actually reading through from verse one to, to eight would probably be enough for now. Okay. Because nine is the fifth seal. All right, let me turn off the strongs while I read. Kind of hard to read with all the numbers in there. Okay, six through eight or a one through eight? Yes, please. All right. All right. And I saw when the lamb opened up one of the seals and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Amen. Uh, what translation were you re reading out of there? Uh, KJV. KJV. Do you want me okay. to switch while we're doing our study? Yes. Yeah, so... Um... Well, I mean, I don't know exactly which translations have this, but I've managed to find one, the New International Version. So it reads slightly different there in verse 8. Um, All right. And also the, uh, now polyglot, it, the Polyglot Apostolic Bible, I think it's called. NIV is going to get hammered as it is, and I can't key it to Strong's. Yeah, well, I mean, the Strong's, to bring across this point, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if we're going to need the Strong's, but it'll actually be interesting to take a look what the Strong's say as well here. Okay. And um, I don't even know where this is derived from and who's translating this and why they translated it in this way. It's a paraphrase. I've looked, I've looked at, um, I've looked at the KJV and it translates it differently. I don't know what Greek te text the KJV uses, but there seems to be several, several different ones. I don't know if I'm not, we would be able to establish this on this broadcast now. Well, the Textus Receptus are the Greek manuscripts from where the KJV was derived from. Okay, but is that the only one that we have? Well, we have multiple different sources, right? There's other sources, but that's not where they, you know, brought the, the KJV into mm. its final form and keyed it into the Strong's. That's about the only way we can get to the Strong's is to go back through KJV into the Textus Receptus. Okay, I see what you mean. Well, uh, yeah, what I was trying to say, and I think this is, the, the dude in the um, YouTube video said that this was an early interpretation and understanding of the Bible. And um, I'll explain his logic here in a minute. So if you take uh, verse 8 and read it that, uh, in the New International Version, okay, you'd see... Uh, okay. I'll read it. Okay. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse... Its rider was named Death, 
and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and the wild beasts of the earth. Okay, so that one there sounds a little bit different, because there, um, the four riders are named in a different way. So we see that the fourth rider is named Death there, in the beginning of verse 8. And then in the second sentence of verse 8, it starts naming them, and it says, uh, that it will take, yeah, that they were giving power over the fourth of the earth to kill with sword, famine, plague, and by the beasts of the earth. So, the logic that, that this um, guy in the video was kind of explaining was that the verse names all the writers. It names the fourth, fourth writer death, it names uh, the second writer war, then it may name the third writer famine leaving plague just so there's only one rider left which would mean plague would apply to the very first rider the white rider okay and um i mean this rider has been kind of a bit of a controversial subject throughout um biblical prophecy and interpretation people have different interpretations and when it comes to the white writer some call him that call him the antichrist some call him christ himself some call him conquest or nationalism right but um i want to try to just take a look and maybe consider the possibility of this writer being um, pestilence or plague so this is uh, what, yeah, this is what I heard in this video. I don't know if we want to provide any links or anything. I don't know even if that would be possible. But um, If you <laughs> send it to me, I can certainly add it in in the description on the video, you know, or the audio file once I put it yeah. up on the Podbean. I can include it, yes. Sure, I'll, I'll send it over then. And, um, yeah, so he was saying that in the earlier uh, church, this is how people were interpreting it and um he said it was quite interesting because i kind of if you do imagine it for a little bit then it's, it kind of makes sense you know right we see that this we see that this horse has a bow but we don't see its arrows so it so, has no physical weapons but it definitely has a way of waging some kind of i don't well, want to yeah the, the arrows are invisible basically, you know? <laughs> so, like, you can't see the bacteria with your eyes. You just get sick or you don't get sick. And it's something that, um, I mean, we've had happen throughout the, the history many times. We've had the Black Plague that wiped out millions of people back in the day. Uh, we've also had the uh, Spanish flu uh -huh. that apparently also wiped out millions of people. And um, it's, it says that it wears a crown, and this actually just resembled to me a crown. Well, I think in Spanish and in Russian, that's something you call uh, corona or corona. Right. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but that's pretty cool. Things that make just you go, hmm. It. Now, yeah, it just made I, me think about that. I want to back up real quick. Uh, yeah, sure. Just a, a fact from some study I was doing, not study, but just something I was looking into, uh, the Spanish flu, most of the deaths attributed to that plague didn't come from catching the virus itself. It came from wearing masks over and over and bacterial infections from your oh mouth God. and breathing developed on the masks and gave people uh, pneumonia wow yeah so That's crazy mask wearing can be unhealthy in and of itself if you're not careful well yeah i guess you got to be smart about everything right like anything has to be done in balance and with with proper um, attention right if you're like wearing a mask all week and you're not changing it then obviously but i guess back in the day no one really knew all these things huh yeah, back in the day, our, our medical knowledge certainly 
isn't where it is now. Yeah, but for sure. That was just uh, a, a little tidbit of, I, I'm not going to say useless information, but it might help yeah, somebody to, to wash their mask once in a while. <laughs> yeah, <I'd> change <laughs> it up every now and again. <laughs> Get the smell of breath off of it. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's gross. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so with this writer as well, another thing that I was thinking of, and a story that popped up in my mind when I was kind of um, considering these things was, um, remember in, was it in Kings or in Chronicles when David uh, started to count uh, the children of Israel? When he did the census. Yeah. 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 And um, God sent a plague. Because he said he thought that what David was doing, <clears throat> excuse me, was a great evil, and it was so great that he decided to punish him with with plague, and that also kind of shows you that plague, even though science says that it's all um, bacteria and all of this, that it's actually in the power of a host of heaven, right? Yeah, I, I agree one hundred percent because. As I covered in the very first bullet points, I, I think you've listened to it before. At least I mm -hmm. hope you have. Uh, yeah, yeah. It definitely ties back to the angelic hosts, spirits that are under God's control completely. All four mm -hmm. horsemen and plus the other horses because there seems to be different ones in the book of Zechariah than just the four John is shown in revelation mm -hmm. so yeah i mean god gives the order and and things move on this planet in the spirit realm that definitely play out into the physical realm amen amen well uh, in that story god sends his angel um and it basically starts killing the children of israel with pestilence and um that always baffled me a little bit. I'm like, well, what, what's the big deal counting people? Why such a such a crazy reaction to that from God? Um, but now, with this whole virus being broken, breaking out, and it being breaking out in China, is actually quite peculiar in light of this story with David because um, we've had the Hong Kong protests going on for ages now, right? I don't know. It started before the virus hit, I believe. Oh, they were ramping up big time right mm -hmm. before and up onto the virus breaking out and then the streets went empty. Exactly. But um, what those people were protesting against was this crazy new... Um, surveillance system that china was rolling out on its population okay where where every single person would be counted and every single person be, would be controlled by this crazy grid it gives you like a social score or something like a like a so if like you jaywalk or if you speed then it knocks your social score down and you won't be able to reap certain benefits from society like taking trains and flying airplanes and stuff like that. So they were already implementing that. And you could see in these Hong Kong protests, people were like sawing and chopping down these massive like surveillance cameras that were on these poles and stuff like that. So it's quite interesting that um, we have a virus breaking out in a country that was trying to not just count its population like David was, but also take advantage and control it in a similar manner. And I think that was the were the actual um, motivations of David, and that's why God punished him in such a severe way, was because he tried to take the control of the people of Israel out of God's hands and put it in his own. Hmm. And that's what really ticked God off. You know, you don't see him do that often so um there's a little little thought there as well well with china with the virus coming from china and all of that civil unrest is happening over there let me ask your opinion while we're sitting right here on top of it it broke out in wuhan and they're claiming of course news 
media <clears throat> is claiming that it, of course, came from a bat where they had bats in the uh, open air market where they were selling bats as, you know, meat, food, and the droppings onto a pig and and then it mutates into something and then all of a sudden one person gets sick brings it home and off we go do you believe that narrative or do you believe it was released out of you know two three blocks away the wuhan you know cdc office there where they were experimenting because this virus, yeah. when you dig into it, it's just no way it naturally came together. It, it had to have some playing yeah, around well, with things. There are there are different opinions, I guess. And, you know, I'm not a scientist. I don't have my own laboratory where I can do my own research and uh, really dig into this. Um, but, um, yeah, there's several opinions floating around. But there are also certain things that really, really make you uh, sit back and take a bit of a pause and think about, yeah, has this, is this really natural or has this come, come about um, in an unnatural manner? So the, the things that I really think about is, well, first off, this happening in China, it's a secular society, uh, communist society i guess Mm -hmm. um doesn't believe in god who knows what kind of morals they have and the remarkable part about this virus is there is that it targets the vulnerable it targets the people who are really not contributing to the world's economy right these people are most likely with conditions they're probably not working full-time if working at all um the elderly the er- elderly the sick the the sick the poor i mean the people with low immune systems um, would we be able to call these people uh, the green grass of the earth would we be able to say that um, the widows, the orphans, the elderly people, the sick, all of these people like the green grass of the earth well, certainly. Are, I mean, we, we, are growing just because of the, you know, whenever it rains from heaven, so to speak, the symbology behind it is that um, kind of the green grass is, is um, the people lives of the by earth. the grace of by the grace of heaven, you know? Yeah. We, we kind of threw that around before a little Mm -hmm. bit in our last run, I do believe when we were covering Daniel and yeah, Mm -hmm. I fully agree with that because the biblical, the biblical narrative through the prophets, even unto Messiah himself, agricultural comparison between people and trees people and and vines i mean mm-hmm. it, it it's from beginning to end so yeah i i would say that we could very easily look at symbolically the green grass daniel and daniel being discussed with nebuchadnezzar could mm-hmm. definitely be eating up the peoples well not just the peoples but the vulnerable and Jesus talks a lot about um, taking care of the widow, taking care of the orphan and the sick and the needy. And I think God even says that a couple of times, a couple of times that he kicked the children of Israel out of, out of their, their country was because they weren't taking care of the vulnerable. And here we have this virus that just is just wiping all of that green grass out yeah well h1n1 during the obama biden administration was targeting the younger and quite a lot died i think the numbers of of death were actually much higher with the h1n1 during their eight-year terms as opposed to what this virus is doing right now but if you dig into what 
uh, Cuomo in New York and Murphy here in New Jersey and Wolf in uh, Pennsylvania, they were literally forcing old folks homes, retirement homes to take sick patients and they weren't set up with proper PPE and means to treat them. And they were forcing them to take these sick people, which ended up making more people sick, including some of the nursing and and doctors on staff. And and it, it contributed to the, the total numbers for the United States dramatically in just this tri-state area that I'm at the mm. bottom of, I'm right underneath all of it, and our numbers are yeah. going back up. We've had the same. <clears throat> We've had the same, and it's been, it's really, really, yeah, it's really sad to see how this this whole situation has been managed. But um, this is, yeah, I mean, we're talking about the West here, and you know. And we're ta- we can bring these topics up, but the, you got to understand that these type of things in, are not even talked about in China. These topics are not even brought up. No, but they'll, I really, they'll really disappear them. Hmm? They'll disappear them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's why I wouldn't put it past a secular communist government to release a virus that would target the part of the population who's not contributing in any way to the economy and it's probably even dragging it down a little bit because um, I watched this other documentary on China as well and they have a massive crisis of, of old people and old pensioner, pensioners uh-huh. because of their one child policy they also have um, a lot more um, men in their country than women and these men are forced to look after their elderly parents with a lot of uh, stress on them who can't get their life together, can't put a family together. A lot of suicide, the suicide rate is going through the roof. And I really wouldn't put it past them if this would be their solution to the problem. Thinning the herd. Yeah, exactly. And just, um, yeah, getting rid of that certain layer of, of the population and you know out of this whole crisis just purely economically i think china's going to come out way on top of everyone else because they're going to be the very first ones and i think they are already the first ones who whose economy was has been fully relaunched and is going at 100 miles an hour while everyone else is down on their on their knees Right. I haven't researched that, so I I can't add anything or take anything away from what you just said. I haven't even looked into the the Chinese economy. I do know that with Trump uh, basically putting sanctions and and slowing down the domination of their trade coming in as opposed to our trade going out with them back and forth – he put the brakes on that, and mm-hmm. of course, it's being said with Biden coming in. It was one of the the talking points of the Republican Party that that Biden would take us back under, you know, China dominating the trade, and that very well could be. I mean, but that that's what a lot of people don't get is trade is what makes the world go around. I mean, mm-hmm. one of our uh, proteges certainly had no qualms stating to you know people live on air that the american people they got no problem buying the oil off of the same countries that train and send out terrorist death squads basically suicide bombers the works isis all of it they got no problem getting their oil from them but they'll talk about them on one hand and then buy the oil from them on the other trade is what makes the world go around and we can't stop it i mean that's what revelation 17 and 18 are predominantly talking about is trade yeah yeah and buying and selling Mm -hmm. is is trading as well and um we trade our words and emotions with each other too yes we do so what is what is trade really 
symbolize if you really look at the root of it. That might be an interesting study as well for one one of these days. That might be. Because, um, yeah, buying and selling, you know, it's the only other place I really noticed it jump out at me, that sentence, buying and selling, is when Jesus is kicking out the traitors out of the temple of God, where they were buying and selling. Hmm. So I've never even thought to compare that to like Revelation 17, 18, or any other place that may pop up in Scripture. Yeah, it's a good, interesting study, especially for those people who think that the body is the temple of God. And with him mm, placing a trading and selling type of thing. Uh, I mean, okay, I'm not even going to go there. Well, Maybe that's for some other... Let me No, let me clarify what you were saying, because the way you said it, you could take it two different ways. The our body is the temple of the Holy spirit. I mean, that's where he resides in us, Mm -hmm. but is it the temple that talks about the beast sitting in the temple, proclaiming himself to be God? No, that, that, that's, that's the clarity there. The way you just said that, that was very interesting because you said that, um, our body is the temple uh, that's being indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Right. And I think if you actually look at that passage where Jesus is kicking the traitors out, what really ticked them off was the fact that they were selling doves in the temple. And the dove is the uh, symbol of the Holy Spirit as well there. So, interesting way of wording it. Michael. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't agree. There is a, a, a big theological teaching out there that it's what we do with our right hand and what thoughts are in our mind that that's where the beast is going to basically sit on the throne within each individual person. Now, I, I don't agree with that. When he goes well, up onto the holy place and proclaims himself to be God, be that the Vatican, be that the Temple Mount, be that, you know, uh, Valhalla, whatever, you know, Hare mm-hmm. Krishna, wherever he may choose to step up onto a holy place, he's going to step up somewhere. Then the mark, when it is initiated, that you can't buy nor sell nor trade, it's going to be very physical. Now, well, is well, is it tied into the vaccination for the plague? Some people are proclaiming that right now. I got a post on my wall. The answer <laughs> I got from a girl that has a pretty big ministry, and I, my mouth just hangs open when I listen to her answers or read her answers. I'm like, are you serious? You know? Yeah, um, but um, I think – just looking at it in one way is would also be would also be um, missing the bigger picture here because we know that the Bible is multi layered, right? Yes, and that it's true on so many levels. Yes, so um, it might be true in a spiritual sense that you might be able to take a spiritual mark of some sort even before the physical fulfillment has happened as in on a daily basis of me and you um, applying the book of Revelation to our lives, our personal lives. So I think there might be a layer of interpretation and of meaning that can be found um, in these verses. But yeah, I agree with you that the ultimate physical fulfillment of it is going to look a little bit different than just having bad thoughts in your mind and doing bad actions with your right hand, so to speak. Right. Uh, consciously. Yes. They, they apply so, it to lawlessness, you know, getting out from under yeah. the Ten Commandments and Sunday worship that Constantine initiated through, you know, the early yeah. formation of and the RCC, that that's the mark of the beast. And I think all these things kind of might hint and point to the mark of the beast and on certain levels, you know, in certain historical time periods. Maybe if we were living 
in that time, and we were living in the time of Hitler when people were putting the swastika on their right hand or on their forehead, we would also probably think that, damn, this is the, you know, this is the end times, like millions of Jews being Well, they thought it was. And yeah, and I don't blame them. And it probably was for them in their time and on their level, it was an apocalyptic time, you know? It was definitely a predecessor to what is to come. I mean, think about it. When you cannot buy nor sell nor trade except you have the mark, you are on the run. You are are a fugitive. (laughs) And you're going to be hungry. And you're going to start losing weight. And and those poor people that died, six million of them in that time, and there's been great slaughters that don't even get mentioned in history. And, mm-hmm. and encyclopedias there's been big ones mm-hmm. and th- you're going to basically end up looking pretty much just like they did and be herded into places where they're going to take your head or throw you in an oven i mean you can't stack up with so many stinking bodies before you got to do something with them oh yeah well this is the scary part isn't it and um that's what follows these four seals, because these first four seals, they're just a pre precursor to worse things coming down the barrel. Because in the next verse, with the fifth seal, we see the per- persecution of Christians rises on a massive scale, right? Yes. And that's also kind of a thing that I've been noticing on the Internet and... Um, through this actually whole Trump, uh, these four years of Trump's, Trump being in power in the U.S., that um, the Christian face has really been, um, how do you say this, or the Christian reputation, the way people see Christians, has been quite, quite, um, how, how do you call it when you, Make something look really bad. Demoralized? Demoralized? Demoralized, that's a good term, I guess yeah. Dem- demoralized, because um, it was just crazy. I was watching when they were counting the votes, and there was Trump supporters on their knees with their hands in the sky praying for Mr. Trump to be reelected. And it was just, I mean... Scary, isn't it? It's scary, and what I think is it's really discrediting the church, man. Well, and what I see, let me try to sum up what, you, what, what you're pointing at. What I see happened in America, from my point of view being here, is the patriot movement got melded together with Christianity. And all of a sudden, Christians are gun-toting, you know, beans and bullion and buckshot you know wearing colors and riding harleys and you know not knocking these people but to be a true believer you can't be a patriot at the same time because i I Mm -hmm. said it last night i ran a uh bang tango myself and then picked up kip after i took a break But I told him, I said, if you're playing in politics, you're playing in Mystery Babylon. There were literally Christians, like you said, they were praying, hands up in the air, praying as they were counting the votes. I had a post on my wall that I put up the pictures. There were people with their hands on the Washington Monument, the obelisk. And, you know, D.C. is set up in in an evil, you know, uh, (laughs) Masonic kind of way. And that that monument is not about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob whatsoever. And they were literally placing hands on it and praying for Trump to win. Well, you're putting your faith in a man. Pray for exactly. God to intervene. Don't, you know, pray for Trump to, to be president so you can get four more years of your Disney vacation and all that stuff. Pray for the kingdom to come. And that's not what they pray. They want four more years of prosperity and freedom and good times. Yeah, Yeah, well, um, Trump has definitely been a very controversial figure. What he's been doing with um, 
there in the Middle East with this peace treaty or and whatnot people are talking about. It's all, yeah, it all seems like he's trying to push, push prophecy a little bit. And I've <laughs> listened to a couple of people talk about this, and there's apparently a movement that believes, that, and I think it's called the Dominionist. Uh, yeah, Dominionism. And, That's a dangerous and, one. And those guys are basically trying to push Trump uh, to make all these changes and kick off the end times so the rapture happens quicker. <laughs> yeah. That's that's their that's their logic. Yeah, the and, seven and mountain just, theology and insane. that's part of it. <laughs> it's insane. And I think it's actually I mean, Pompeo says some outrageous things. Uh huh. He's all and, about bringing on the rapture. Yeah, exactly. And that's just I can't believe what's happening and I feel like this is like this is one thing definitely that this whole pandemic and this virus has done is first off it's discrediting the old government system uh -huh. because all of the people are really seeing how rotten and corrupted they are. Right. All right. Well, let me add this. Let me add this real quick. Stay on that thought. Remember the first rider goes forth conquering and to conquer that's his purpose is to conquer mm -hmm. and he is successful at it because he goes forth conquering mm -hmm. so it, it gives you his purpose and the fact that he is this rider is successful and this rider ain't a man it ain't trump it ain't mm -hmm. obama it ain't nobody it, it is a spiritual entity sent forth from the heavens by god that's in Zechariah mm -hmm. chapter one and Zechariah chapter six for the listener, but moving just that forward, it, it lines up with exactly what you're saying that mm -hmm. this, this virus has turned the world upside down, caused the division necessary for ultimately the, in its final stages, everybody to turn on Christians. Well, not just the Christians, but I think the old way of thinking, that's going to be the thing. Yes. Like the old government, the old democracy ideas that were derived from Christianity and from the Ten Commandments and from religion in general. Right. And we are already seeing the old way of socializing is changing. Everything's moving to a more digital way to make it all remote, up in the cloud. Uh, no cash just you know you just touch your card and the payment's done it's all like we're moving into this new way of thinking this new way of living that's what it feels like to me all right and well, the that, that being, lines up with some other things you and i have discussed about the ai technologies and mm -hmm. uh 5g did you catch an article that flew by on the internet. I only saw it posted once, but supposedly they have launched the first 6G satellite already. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that. Uh, China. China did that, didn't they? Uh, it might have been. I didn't I yeah. didn't even open it up. I just I saw the headline. I was like, oh, boy, yeah. here we go. Yeah, it was China. And they're saying that um, while the West is arguing about 5G being safe or not safe and to implement it or not china's already ahead and is already launching 6g so well we should get along yeah we should get get on with it is what yeah. the article was saying the ever trumpers <laughs> fail to realize trump is one of the biggest proponents of 5g he he made the big push to go into it and then you got on one hand you got you know millions of truthers christians included saying oh 5g's bad 5g's bad well here the president you're so wanting the man you're so wanting to have <laughs> over you he's the one pushing it and he's also pushing the mandatory vaccines mm -hmm. initialized you know by the united states government he's going to yep. use government to initiate the vaccination yep heard about that as well uh-huh so so Careful yeah, what you ask for, because you might get buyer's remorse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Now. And, uh, yeah, good point there on mentioning 
about the rioter that's conquering, going out to conquer and conquering. Because um, it definitely seems like this virus is doing nothing but conquering in the last 10 months or so. When you look at all these charts of the infection rates and deaths and everything, right. it's definitely growing and exponentially con- bent on con- conquest for sure. <laughs> Yeah, in the Textus Receptus, the crown that the rider is given is, of course, Stephanos, a Stephanos crown. Stephanos. Yes. So does that come from the word or from the name Stephen, Stephan? It cert- the uh, guy who got stoned? Uh, certainly could be a tie to it, definitely. Uh, he was I'm, a martyr. Yeah, I'm, I'm scrolling. Martyrs looking at coming it. up here. I was looking well. to try to find the uh, Spanish. Oh, to go. Yeah, over. but I think I mean to be honest, that's just the thing that came up while we were reading. I just said, "Oh, that's interesting." Corona, but um, I think it's a diadem. So the crown is not really a full-on crown like a king would wear, but it's a more of a. A diadem, something like something Caesar would wear. It's know? that like a, leafed. It comes yeah. around. It goes around and in, in, on the back of the head and comes up and doesn't quite close completely up. Yeah, more like a but horseshoe I, shape. I wonder if the coronavirus was called the corona because it has a similar kind of crown uh, over there when you look at it in a microscope. I'm not sure. You should look that up. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to research that off air, pulling up all them tabs. Boy, I'd probably crash my system. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but, um, I'm trying to find something here in blue letter for a Spanish translation. I, I don't know. I don't see nothing popping right out. Let me go to the, I think the ESV would be the same. It'd still be Stefanos. Yeah, but... um. These are the kind of thoughts that have been going through my head here with um, this whole virus situation going on. And, um, yeah, really wondering if we're seeing the White Rider start his conquest. Or maybe he's even already in the middle of his conquest or not even thinking of stopping his conquest. I don't know. We'll see. Well, I, I saw an article... And it's in video, too. Uh, They're already planning, supposedly, you know, COVID-21. So Mm. they're getting ready to ramp it up. It's supposedly going to mutate into its next variation and even stronger. And here we go again. Mm. And, of course, without or with any plague, you're going to have to have the inoculation to it and... Then comes the, is the inoculation, the vaccinations, is that the mark of the beast? And you certainly have a big number of Christians that state that, yes, this is the mark of the beast coming to take this. So you're going to have millions of Christians saying, no, 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 I'm not taking that. This is the mark of the beast. Well, as I said on my wall, Brian chimed in on it. You got to have a beast before you have a mark. Well, uh, you know, that's also a thing I've been considering and that's been scaring me a little bit as well. That it seems like um, these these do- dominionists or whoever, p- these people who are um, believe in this twisted theology and twisted prophecy with the rapture being mixed in and everything really the whole prophecy being put on its head, if these people will be able, because it does warn us there that there's a great deception coming. And if these people, like, you know, the, like I've been thinking about the devil also reading the book of Revelation and thinking to himself, could I pull something off to deceive the Christians to think that this is the real deal and to trick them into accepting something completely different. You know what I mean? I know what you're saying, but in my opinion, and that's what it is, an opinion, I don't think 
the beast is going to want to trick us. And, of course, it says that, mm-hmm. that, that the beast is operating in accord with the works of Satan. So it's kind of like a, a, a ground plan, a ground game is laid, and then, of course, Satan hands over his authority and his seat to the beast when he comes up. And Well, it, it says that the false prophet is the one who initiates. performs the signs and wonders and yes. deceives the nations. Yes. Do I think that we're going to be tricked into taking the mark? I don't think so. I think they want no, no. honest, loyal, bow the knee in the face of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, worship yeah. unto them in the face of God. It's going to be a, con- a con- conscious decision, and um, I don't think it would be fair from God's side to try to um, uh, punish someone who took a mark just to save his family or to feed his kids or something, you know. I think it's a more deeper kind of sin. It's something that God, it's something so bad that God wouldn't even be able to forgive you. Oh, like it's Well, it's absolute turning your back on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and, and worshiping another God, a little G-God. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I have some... Um, theories of my own of my own here and it's not only my own theory there's actually quite a few christians out there who think in the same way and i think that this mark is going to be something that is um that is going to change god's creation in such a way that it's not going to be the same thing anymore well that that ties to dna and certainly i, I do know one one big one i mentioned his name tonight rob skiba he does promote mm-hmm. that that is is a DNA altering type of thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's DNA altering, and I think DNA can be altered on different on other levels. I don't. There's there's something more, there's something worse about this. Not just not just that. You know, DNA can be changed with just taking drugs, for instance. Even yeah. So. so I think there's something something deeper going on here well what's that and that what's that guy's name the crazy scientist dude that owns the electric car gig uh, elon musk yeah, elon musk well he yeah. wants to tie a chip into our brain that links us to all of our technologies and the future technology still to come 5g 6g well, now whatever that, now that is something that would maybe tick god off a little bit I really wonder, and I know that um, we've been talking about this before, and I know you have your own views on the daily sacrifice and so on, but um, what if the daily sacrifice is something that symbolizes what we do on a daily basis to get to um, achieve certain goals in life, you know? Like, for instance, you would have to invest time to learn Spanish to be able to know Spanish. And you'll have to sacrifice your time to be able to get to the end goal of knowing Spanish. But if you had a chip where you would be able to just cut that corner, not learn anything, not sacrifice anything, and just obtain the skill just by uploading it into your brain, no, you I, kind of take that sacrifice away, don't you? And I And I'll agree with you that using that as a basic principle to explain why God might get ticked. I I will agree with you that, yeah, doing stuff like that would certainly be a good thing that it may, it may just trip God's trigger and then it's game on. That's the time of the end. Do I, like you said, because I have my own viewpoint on what the, the Tamid in Hebrew, the daily sacrifice is, I believe that that sacrifice is going on in the throne room as opposed to anything we do down here on earth. And a lot of people, of course, tie it to the third temple that's still to be built. But actually, I can send you some links to a YouTube channel I got. They've got a synagogue underneath the Temple Mount with a a pomegranate, uh, like, golden statue 
in the in the middle all facing to that statue and they erect with these aerated oxygen infused concrete blocks they can just erect the altar to do sacrifice of animals in minutes they've got all the stuff ready they've got the wardrobes they've got the utensils they've got everything ready to go the menorah it's all ready they can just pop 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 and put it up in like two days like a concert and boom it's game on they're sacrificing slaughtering animals blood sacrifice and they've got their the 70s uh sanhedrin council room in there where the nations were divided between uh 70 elohim and i mean we could go deep on that one yeah yeah we certainly could there's different ways of interpreting it different ways of looking at it and again you know we could actually even be arguing about the same thing and this is a thing that i've also encountered with other christians where they'll be arguing and saying uh their interpretation is this and the other one would be saying, no, the interpretation of this. But then on a bigger picture, you sometimes understand that they're actually both right. And it's both interpretations at the same time. It just depends on the layer of interpretation that you're looking at. Well, that's as above, so below. It's mm -hmm. what we're doing exactly. here and what they're doing there. Exactly. Thy kingdom so, come, thy will be done. Well, we get snippets of what goes on up there through John and some of the other prophets, what's happening in the throne room. So certainly Amen. if it's playing out there, it, somebody's going to imitate it here, be it in for the good or for the bad. And we have the same thing going on there with the Ark of the Covenant as well. And um, like you were just saying that you think that the daily sacrifice might be a thing going on in heaven. But what if it's both? What if the sacrifices that we make in our lives here in the physical realm are in a symbolic way in the spiritual realm are before God on that heavenly altar? You know, because this is actually a thing that I've recently understood in my own life. About a year ago, there were uh, certain things. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. Let's let's put it this way, certain things in my life that I kind of loved and kind of held on to, but knew I shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing. And when I placed those things on the altar, and you know, they were quite dear to me. I liked them. I loved them. Our, flesh, I our flesh loves a lot of things we should yeah. not be doing. Yeah. But I sacrificed them. And that sacrifice was, ex um, yeah, was accepted by God and he blessed me beyond measure. I was just, I was blown away um, when that happened to me. And um, that made me understand that the sacrifice that it talks about in the Bible. So the animal was just a symbol, you know, because the lamb, the little lamb was symbolizing something that is dear to you, something that you like. Placing that on the altar for God, sacrificing the flesh, so to speak, right? Right. He will, um, you know, there is some kind of spiritual mechanism there. Certainly. So that daily sacrifice symbol, definitely worth looking into what that might mean in the physical realm. Right, but I believe, uh, is it Daniel chapter 7 or 8, where it talks about the little horn cast down the stars of heaven, the host of heaven mm -hmm. tramples upon mm -hmm. them. He, he causes the Tamid to cease. Now mm -hmm. is that he causes you being able to lay down something you shouldn't be doing? Or is that he causes the t the sacrifice in the third temple to cease or does he by taking control of the heavenly host casting some of them to the ground has he pulled them from their positions at the altar in heaven and caused the tommy to be disrupted there i mean or do all three hook together it might be all three that's what i was just about to say but what i was also trying to think when you were just speaking there and this is a question that we've pondered upon 
many times before when we were when you read those verses that he casts down the host of heaven and he tramples them no sorry he tramples the host of heaven i don't know if it says that he, if he cast them down or not but um he definitely tramples them and we were talking about this before how can you trample the host of heaven well let's think about it if would we consider war famine plague and death the host of heaven do you think we could do that mm, do we consider the acts of the spiritual entities that initiate these things well, it, it comes out and names them here it says that death is a spirit right well it yeah. says that pestilence is a spirit so if we see a man come on the scene that promises um how'd you say that power over death power over pestilence power over play of uh, power over war just take this mark and you'll never die and you'll never be hungry again you'll never be sick again Hmm? Is that the way that he tramples on the ho heavenly host? Because if death and Hades and pestilence is a heavenly host, cutting them out of the picture like that by enhancing the human body to overcome death and pestilence. And That's an interesting point. I mean, could it be part of what will play out when... Well, this little horn does rise into power. Could it be the four horsemen that he puts them back in the stable? Uh, yeah, I, well, I guess it could be. Because it says that he conquers many by peace, and war is one of one of the spirits here on, I think on the list. I think you've made a good point to ponder in, in a deeper study, certainly. But, yeah, and I mean... Maybe for next time, it would also be interesting to read Zechariah, where it talks about the chariots and the horsemen and the craftsmen. And that's a, that's a question that I was asking myself. If the Bible calls, if Zechariah calls them craftsmen, then what is their craft? And I think the craft of the craftsmen is being described here in verse 8 of Revelation and certainly, I, I agree with that 100%. Their craft is to do what God tells them to do with the powers that they have over at, at the future point that John sees a quarter of the earth. Well, yeah. Well, I think they each of them has a specific craft, Yes, which is, uh, which is either famine, plague, death, or the sword. And when they, I mean, when they work in conjunction with one another, you take a plague, mm -hmm. you run it through globally. Well, that in turn did what? It, it basically tipped the scales in the economy, which mm -hmm. when you take food out of a country, what are you going to get? You're going to get people real hungry and real irritable and ready to go take what they want. There goes yeah. war. I mean, the, the all of them work hand in hand and with war here comes death following along with his cart you know scooping up the bodies yeah as we see in yeah. the paintings yeah they work in in conjunction with one another and i think these were the the host of heaven that weren't letting empires rise rise to their ultimate ultimate global pinnacle you know like hitler for instance his empire was destroyed by war. Like, you know, if, if it wasn't stopped by war, it would have spread. And it was spreading by war, obviously, as well. But Well, that's what Zechariah, that's what he's shown and told, that exactly. therefore is to stop the horns of the Gentiles from being able to basically take over yeah. Jerusalem. Exactly. exactly. And then what if we have a little horn that comes up and he's the one who takes out these four and paves the way for this final 
fulfillment, so to speak. And it and could, it could the be one. the four. I'm sitting here on, on Daniel eight, and it says that, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, toward the east, toward the pleasant land, toward Israel. So this horn is getting ready to rise up. As Zacharias says, the four horsemen are sent out on patrol to stop that from happening. Now, the mm -hmm. point you're making is, is it the four horsemen that he puts them back in the stable? It makes sense because listen, and it says, and it wax great even to the host of heaven, or should we say the four horsemen? And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. Now there's, well, let me finish. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of the sanctuary was cast down. So the job, the, the place of the sanctuary, it's taken, it's disrupted. Mm -hmm. And this prince, the one in charge of it, him and it sounds like all those underneath him principalities powers i'm not going to mm -hmm. say rulers of darkness because they're they're not bad they're at the altar but mm -hmm. he somehow gets control over them and and i have my theory on how he does it i believe it's through sorcery witchcraft he's a warlock he he's got the grand grimoire the keys of solomon i mean i've held it in my hand and looked at it and i was like whoa this is some dark stuff i was flipping through the pages and i was like ah now here you go handed it back but somehow he casts the spells does whatever and takes out some of the host and some of the stars does that include the four horsemen is it just the four horsemen? That could go a lot of ways, but I believe there's a link also to Revelation 9 where it says, and a star falls from heaven and unto him is given the key to open the bottomless pit. I believe we have a link in all this right here. I believe that's, that's kind of a parallel. Well, that can be, that could be the case easily, but, um, there's so much going on here. Oh, yeah. I mean, and there's like trying to separate out this whole. Oh, it's pretty difficult because we definitely have some spiritual stuff going on here that's interwoven with physical stuff and historic stuff. It's it's a it's a handful. But um, you were talking about him being a warlock or a wizard and things like that. And um, you know what that actually, that really, really reminded me of a series I watched about the, um, who was the guy who came up with rockets, who sent us on, to, on the moon? Uh, Parker's, was it? Was it Parker's? Hold on. Uh, uh, it, he was a German, German rocket scientist. Hold on. I should know his name right off the top of the bat. Warner Von Braun. Okay, then there's someone else. Um, All right, well, then you're going back to the Babylon project with the, uh, let me put that in there. Hold on. The Strange Angel. There's this series they, called Strange Angel. Yeah, where they brought some entity through in the Babylon workings. Uh, Babylon workings. Let me see what I can well, do that. We, um, yeah, it was, it's with Alistair Crowley, Crowley Jack Parsons, Parsons, Jack Parsons, yes, Parsons. of, uh, the Babylon working, it was L. Ron Hubbard, Jack Parsons, Alistair yeah. Crowley, they were in the yeah. jet so, propulsion laboratories. This is, this is a great point, and let's talk about this as well then. Jack Parsons, and Alistair Crowley, and all that, and, um, there's a series out there called Strange Strange Angel, and um, for anyone out there who might want to watch it, just a brief warning, it has a lot of inappropriate content and definitely not advisable to watch with your kids. But um, an interesting thing to derive from the series 
is that um, Jack Parsons, who's been a massive part of uh, rocket science back in the day, uh, this series portrays him of getting involved in the most darkest occult practices involving Satanism and um, a theology that Aleister Crowley was spreading back then uh, that only had one, one rule. Uh, there was only one commandment, uh, which was do what thou wilt or do what, the, do what you want, basically, which is the complete opposite of a daily sacrifice type um, way of living. Yeah. Right. And um, what really blew me away was that these guys were basically getting this scientific knowledge and information in these crazy uh, occult settings that they were doing. Uh -huh. And it's become quite apparent that the Nazis were actually up to the same type of thing. So considering what the Book of Enoch tells us about where technology has come from uh, in the pre-flood world where angels were teaching people to make weapons of war and other things. It's interesting um, that we've had a bit of a technological boom in the last hundred of years of existence yeah. in human history. And, and, that, and um, that's that's tying in what's happening right now with what they're calling the Great Reset with the Fourth Industrial Revolution. It's like they've gotten a new batch of technology mm -hmm. in hand. They got it on file. So yeah. did the Babylon yeah. workings download a bunch of new stuff? Did they do something deeper and greater than the Babylon working itself and tap into that? fallen angel technology even deeper certainly could be well let's think about our um who would you put in as a figure for 2020 if you were th to think of rocketry or rocket science i would put in elon musk mm -hmm. yeah the guy is, has his own um space x company that is launching rockets into space and that is uh, planning on getting people over to Mars by 2035 or something like that. And I think Elon is also tying in the 2035 date, not only with us being capable of getting to Mars, but with us having this um, AI symbiosis with this chip and with this thing coming on board, we will be able to um, find different ways and different sciences and different methods of even getting to Mars that we can't even think and comprehend of right now because we're just not there in our evolutionary step, so to speak. Ah, so, so um, he, he might have even be contemplating like uh, teleportation. Well, not just teleportation. He's basically saying that if we manage to merge our brains with AI, we will be able to find new ways and new new laws of physics that we can't even comprehend right now with our brain. You know, uh -huh. like in the matter of seconds, that thing would be able to figure out and solve the most sophisticated and tough problems that we weren't able to solve for thousands of years. Well, when we get to that level, beings, we can only use about 10% of our brain. Some people might be able to use 15 or 20, but when you can tap into the rest of your brain that in my opinion was shut down at the time of the fall with Adam and the cars, by God, on purpose. By God, we're on getting purpose. A bit too crazy with yeah. our brains. <laughs> yeah, when you can tap back into that, which is what it sounds like Elon's up to, that could be a trigger for God to say, "Uh, uh, you go here and go no further." Mm hmm. So. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking as well. I mean, it's is that the way this little horn, whoever he is is able to trample the host of heaven to 
basically interrupt the natural course of things the even the because we were talking about earlier that um, every physical thing has a spirit spiritual aspect behind it by him bending these rules is he somehow disrupting the spiritual natural way of being that's been set in place by god very and well this could is be really Sol- really Solomon had it figured out. I mean, when you go deeper into into just studying Solomon, what he was able to do and control demonic entities, the spirits mm-hmm. of the fallen Nephilim, if he can mm-hmm. utilize them, it's certainly the next step in in, in evil evolution to take control of not just those spirit beings, but the entities from where they were procreated, which would be their fathers, not saying the ones at the altar are, you know, involved in mm-hmm. that because they wouldn't be, they would be locked up in Tartarus, but <clears throat> definitely that would be the next, you know, following the chain to go, to go rogue would to be, to take control of angelic entities, Amen. the host. And, and, um, when we were reading there, through Revelation 6, it, I think in Revelation 5, it talks about every single writer. It, it associates a cherubim with it, right? A cherub, where it says, that, or one of those heavenly beasts. Some people call them cherubim, with the ones with four faces. Yeah, they, they, they're they definitely cherubim, the ones there. Yeah, so these these cherubs are the ones who have power over these riders or are they the riders or what's going on there? Well, I would say that they're the, the heralds, you know, like the heads, the crowns. Well, not, no, not, that's not what I'm saying. The heralds, they would be the ones, you know, you know, like back in the 1700s, hear ye, hear ye. If if God's got something to say, he doesn't have to even say it. He can, I guess he either speaks it or telepathically conveys it to them to tell, you know, John to come and see Mm -hmm. they herald the plan, the initiatives, you know, of what the father wants to do. That's just speculation. That's an opinion. I mean, we can, we can do that in a million places in the word. Yeah. But then, I mean, yeah, you might be right, but uh, they definitely proclaim the role and they proclaim the craft of the craftsman in the um, in the. And they may be in charge verse. of it. Who knows? I mean, I don't know how the hierarchy, the structure exactly yeah. works in the heavenly realm. I do know that it's just like a military structure. It goes from a, a five-star general on down the line to a private. I mean, angels it, are technically at the bottom of, of the, the ranking. They're just messengers. Yeah. And it, I mean, there's says that it's four of them and they, um, wreak havoc in the fourth of the earth as well. Yes. Then, uh, I don't know if there's something there, but, um, there's another entity mentioned here, which is Hades. Mm hmm. And, um, it's also mentioned as an entity, which would make it the fifth entity mentioned in the chapter. So, um, is it an entity, or is it a result of the entities working? Well, I know that um, Hades is spoken about as an entity throughout the Bible as well, and Hades is it says that Hades is thrown into the lake of fire at the end as well along with the beast and death and all that yes is it a place is it an entity or is it both it's both i'm pretty sure it's both pretty sure and that would make it so we saw four cherubim here in this picture but we know that there's a fifth cherubim that's guarding the garden of eden yeah, the the embroidery on the uh, inside yeah. the tabernacle on the cloth. I think there was five 
that were supposed to have been originally embroidered on it. And so there you also have a parallel with Paradise and Hades. And I don't know if you can maybe even draw that kind of parallel, but that's what came to my mind. Oh, uh, there's so, got to be a connection of some sort. It's just, you know, it's beyond my uh, scope of understanding and being able to put it to words with, of course, not going in, digging it out, writing out a bunch of notes. and. Amen. But this is why we do these things, right? Right. We just I mean, relay them to each other. And I think we just had that happen several times here right on the fly where you would mention something that would pop into my head and I would mention something that would pop into yours. So, And we're always studying. That's what we do. I mean, yeah. instead of doing bad things with our time, it's good to take a topic and run it out. And the collection of books that I have now, I'm able to go from, you know, biblical text to extra bib- biblical text, apocryphal, you know, all that. I got, I got the works now. Absolutely. Um, it's definitely a learning curve. And I think both you and me have come a long way since uh, the time that we just just met for the first time. Those were the fun days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's all serious. Yeah. But I'm happy, uh, happy we managed to stick together and we're still doing these studies every now and again because it really uh, keeps me going then. I wish we get on air a little more often, but I know with, uh, and, and I learned tonight, I thought we were separated from six by six hours time. It's, it's five hours time. So yeah, I yeah. St- stood corrected on that one. Cause I looked it up. I was like, Jersey to, to Paris. Oh, five hours. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, do you guys also set the, t- the clock back by an hour? Yeah. And I can't stand it right now. Kay and I both are going, we're we're having trouble adjusting to the time. I mean, it feels like it's so much later. Yeah. You're like, what time is it? And she's like, it's seven thirty. I'm like, oh my, it feels like ten thirty. You know, you're ready to go to bed, and the sun went down. It, I I guess it's getting dark here at about. It's still just a tad light outside right now. I guess about five fifteen. It's dark. Yeah, same here, dude. Yeah. Don't know why they do it, but um. Again, no one's asking us, huh? They just do it. Yeah, well, it was, I forget the original reason why they did it for the farmers or for work industry during the World War II uh, or during the uh, economic crash, all that. My mom always told me that they somehow save electricity through it. Uh, I don't, uh, really, don't uh, really understand. Maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe yeah. there is a reasoning in saving some electricity. But yeah. I know that that one hour does take a little bit of getting you. It takes me usually about a month to get used to the time change. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't affect me in that, in that way, but, um, it is a bit crazy how dark it gets, how quick that happens. Uh, but, um, well, you know why God initiated the winter time to take all your crops you grew and all the work you did all spring and summer and fall and to sit back and relax, enjoy it, <laughs> yeah. cuddle up with a cup of hot cocoa and, and take a break for a few months. It's our Good rest point. time. That's all it is. He sh- shortens the hours of the day. Take a break. Do a podcast. <laughs> Just take full advantage of that. We should. Um, I mean, we go like Biden said, we're going to have a long, cold winter. So, bro, we got to do this thing up. Yeah, winter's coming. Um, yeah, but I mean, I think maybe we should maybe stop here for now. Okay. And we can go on and at some other point can go into the t- into the topics we mentioned a bit deeper. Maybe we can talk about the mark or talk about the image of the beast that gets life breath breathe into him. Well, according to that female I mentioned, I'm not going to name her on here, but she uh, she said that Trump initiated, had ordered a statue of Pope John Paul II, big brass statue. It's about nine, ten feet tall. That's the image of the beast. That's what she said. 
Oh well. Oh well. All oh, right. Before man. I the before beast, I let you beast. off the hook here. Yeah. Are we in the seals? Your opinion? I think we've been in the seals for a long time. I think the seals have been happening for a while now, and um, I think, like we mentioned, um, the thing that's going to really kick us off and take us to the fifth seal is going to be when there's going to be someone who comes on the scene going to find a way to trample these or solve these four problems that haven't been letting civilization get along with its life for 70,000 of years, which would be war, pestilence, death, and famine. And once he tramples those guys, he's going to take up on himself the next task of the fifth seal, which would be the prosecution of Christians, or he will probably um, portray that as people who are non, not progressive, people who are slowing down evolution, uh, or human 2.0 being proposed by the false prophet and his image, who seems to be talking. Yeah. So, um, and that's AI, according to some of our past well, discussion. Our, Call it AI or call it whatever you want to call it. I don't know. but um, We're going to find out. We'll find out, I guess. Yeah, but I think that uh, I think that these four writers have been writing through history for hundreds of years now. And um, the person who's going to be able to solve those four problems is the person who's going to take us to the next seal. Amen. And with that. I guess we will call this one a wrap. Amen. Amen. It was nice to uh, chat. Nice yeah, I'm study. glad I finally got you on. I got to start yeah. at three, and you. St I thought you were at nine, like I said, but it was eight. So I guess if we want to run, we can go four, nine, or five, yeah. ten. And we can do it on eight. Saturdays. I just I, uh, had a bunch of stuff to do late into the evening and then ended up wanting to – talk to somebody about some words so i ended up with kip mm. on i was supposed to have joyce on but she went mia on me with her grandson so no i think this actually worked out well and eight o'clock would even be quite better for me because i was actually already done with my stuff and i was thinking damn i gotta wait for a whole hour now and i was doing my research studying around and then you you messaged me and i was like oh okay forgot to try to charge my phone next time i'll be more careful with that that's all right we may do yeah and i think actually that was good man thank you for uh you know inviting me and thank you for having the chat i thought we covered some pretty good topics and i think there's a lot of food for food for thought in there well that's what i'm doing the bang tango series with you anybody who wants to come on and, and talk is just to kick around some stuff and you know yeah when we go deep, we go deep. If we just throw yeah. opinion, we throw opinion. It is what it is. It's bang tango, bro. But I really like the way we do it. Like, you know, the, me and you, we don't argue. We have a good um, understanding of what, like, sometimes I struggle to get the words out of my mouth. And you seem to understand where I'm going with things and can just pick up where I'm falling short. So I think we complement each other quite well there. I don't think you fall short whatsoever, bro, but I, I know what you're saying. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. sometimes you go over my head and I'm falling short, so don't even go there. <laughs> yeah, we go, we do it to each other. Yeah. It's mutual, <laughs> which All right. makes it really cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, we'll wrap this one up. I love you, bro. Stay yeah. strong, work hard. Long, cold Same. winter coming, so let's let's gear up and do this thing. Yeah, man. God bless, stay healthy, stay safe, uh, say hi to your family, and um, yeah, next time, let's let's talk again. All right, will do. Cool. All right, Arthur. And it looks like we might not have that much time to talk about it, so now's the time to do it. Amen, amen, I agree with you. Good having right. you on. I, I, we could do it every night if I had it my way, but I know that's kind of unfeasible <laughs> <laughs> well we might actually be able to do it some some more time this week because i took the whole week off oh uh, i almost burnt out with this new job of mine it's really crazy 
Yeah. Well, I got to work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then I'm off for four days. So I'll have four days to play with, you know, the weekend, oh, nice. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So yeah, maybe we can touch base on Thursday then again. All right, and see see what happens. All right, bro. All right, love you, man. Hang in there. Yep. Take care. Later. Bye. Bullet point.